G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, um, I haven't done a lot of build videos in ages and I really haven't put much out in the last month except for a review on a, a particular um, a Rolls Royce. So um, what's been happening? I've been doing this. This is what's engrossed me. I've got so much enjoyment and I've got stuck into this. And as, as you know, after my recent move to Brisbane, I haven't exactly felt like doing videos or builds or even modelling. And it was only really about a month ago that I got my hobby room set up and I could settle down and start enjoying myself. And I picked up this bounty and I have had an absolute ball putting together and um, getting it this far. So we might go through that build fairly um, quickly, show you where I'm up to, and then I might show you a few of the techniques I've used to get like the lovely wood effect. And there's quite a lot of scratch in here because the kit's fairly inaccurate, <laughs> as to be expected, with an old Rebel kit that's, um, this is like 1956 or something, this kit. So it's, it's pretty old, but um, it's not a bad basis to build a nice model. And um, as you can see, it's starting to look rather nice. All right, let's get on with the build process and I'll talk about how the sprues were when I first opened the box. Now the instructions for this kit, pretty old, pretty old, pretty old. I mean, it's been around since 1956. A lot of German, um, not a lot of English, but I've got a brief history there which you can read about if you're interested in the mutiny and everything that happened. There's a whole blurb here which is all your caution and stuff, and that goes on for bloody pages. It's sort of more about what not to do. The um, the colour guide, well, I don't agree with a lot of that. I'll show a quick snap here of the um, the photos on the side of the box, which is the colour scheme, which is supposedly the new um, Royal Navy colours they would have used. But this would have been privately painted anyway, this ship, so it's a whole bloody contention there. I went with the colour scheme off the box art, which is very similar to the, um, the replica that was made in New Zealand, which was used in our um, bicentenary. So that's the bounty that I like the look of. So uh, get a reasonably good sprue map, um, although the parts aren't actually in those spots. Uh, this might have been the original sprue map, but um, as as we see later on, this sort of this thing's been rejigged and buggerized around with over the years. And if you go hunting for the parts, they're not always where they say they'll be. <laughs> but there's not a lot. There's probably less than 100 parts in this thing, so it's pretty easy to find. You get rat lines, but I won't be using those. I'll make my own, but they're not bad. You could you could get away with them. Um, sails again, not bad, but I won't use those. I like some cloth ones, so I won't bother with that. Instructions are fairly clear. They're basic, but at least they are clear. So it's pretty easy to follow what needs to be done. And the order is not too bad, although I'll completely ignore that. And I always build the way I like to build ships. So, you know, I'll put things together how I like. Um, there's, there's the odd little bit of rigging information like there, rig the mast, and there's rigging information here, although I don't agree with that either, uh, on how to, um, how to attach the anchors. Um, on it goes. And actually, when you get to the... Um, when you get to the end, you get, which is rather nice, you get two different types of the rigging for the ship. You get a simplified rigging if you're a little bit scared. So it's a very simple rigging with just some main lines and it's very easy. Or they give you the detailed rigging, yes, which is actually quite comprehensive. And it's quite good. And it's it's fairly accurate, actually. I was quite surprised. It, it's quite good. And you get to use your little um, blocks and tackles and, you know, dead eyes and all that sort of stuff. Actually, I don't think you use dead eyes, just blocks and tackles. And it shows you how to sew the sails on. So that's all quite good. And um, that, that's that's um, that, that's quite a bonus because there's at least three or four pages showing you how to do that. Again, I'll probably ignore that because um, I've got some extensive um, books on rigging of ships and I'll probably uh, go the whole hog and do it my way. You've got the little flags here and they, they show those as always as inaccurately on these things as going backwards, you know, because the ship's going forwards. Yeah, but in sailing ships, the wind propels them, so the flags are always pushed forward. <laughs> Even when you're tacking, though, the flags will only be sideways, so they never go back. If the flag's going back, well, the ship's not going anywhere because basically the wind's blowing. Yeah, you know what I mean? You with me? Yes, it's a common mistake by a lot of people with sailing ships. Anyhow, that's the, um, the instructions. Let's move on. Now, the thing that attracted me to this Revel 110 bounty was that box art, and I actually found the original picture of it there. The kit didn't seem so bad when I first opened it up. There didn't seem to be a lot of flash. There were these lovely rat lines. It does come with sails. I'm not going to use them. But then, now, I finally found this sprue. Things were covered with lots and lots of flash. And uh, it looked like it was a reboxing in 78 from the 1956 kit. Anyhow, surprisingly, the hull halves on the deck snapped together. That's it without glue. So I basically pulled that apart quickly and started filling a few of the sink marks and the bloody uh, injection points. Cemented it all up, which wasn't hard, as I said, it fitted like a glove, and the hull actually started to look very nice. 
Now there were a few little bad bits like the, um, the stern here that needed quite a bit of fixing up and Mr Putty was out, <laughs> yes, Miss Plastic Putty but look that all came together very well especially once I put the transom on the end there or the captain's windows, they went on, went on fine. Now I primed basically the whole top half with yellow style res and then I proceeded to mask so I could get that um, wow line, it's not actually a blimpsel line, it's a wow line because it's, it's basically curved. So I did that and then I followed up with the white to get the full effect of the hull. One of the things that annoyed me about the bounty railings from the start is, see here, these are the um, steps. Best case. Uh, these are the steps that run up, so you can basically come out of the water. That's the water line, right? You can come up the water and you would get into the bounty. You know, basically that's how you get your nubile, half-naked, bare-bosomed Tahitian beauties up and into the boat but unfortunately this um this bit of rail here it's all solid now what i've got on the other side and i'm about to show you now is um i correctly fixed it to cutting the rail just there with the overlap as it should be which is the same as the other side has a slight overlap and i've um introduced this piece here which is supposed to be narrower which flips out of the way, um, or even this whole thing hinges up and out of the way, so that then that becomes basically a doorway. So you go up your ladder, right? Escort your Tahitian beauty in, and she can flaunt and bounce her boobs all around the deck. See, problem solved. Now also, uh, one other thing is this silly arrangement here. Now this would be the um, base for a run of shrouds which would, as far as I know, um, contain the signal flags, right? It's at the bow of the boat, and it's not part of the rat lines. The rat lines actually go on. You can actually see the um, thing. This is where the rat lines go on. And here's what it looks like when the rat lines are, well, this is actually the base for the shrouds. Rat lines are really the horizontal lines, you know. But colloquially speaking, we talk about rat lines as, as being those... Um, all that the rigging for the um, basically the ladder that goes up to the mast. But anyhow, these shroud bases, as we, we should call them here, um, which are rather nice on the rebel kit, so I didn't bother cutting these out and putting my own dead eyes in and um, actually using rope. I thought, no, actually, it's quite nice. They're, they're, they're worth using. But anyhow, the um, imagine your rat lines are going up from there. Now, back here, this... This piece here, which would have lines running from it. And I said, as far as I'm sure, they'll be for the signal flags. They're usually there at the bow. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyhow, they would be behind. Like you'd have right lines and they sit behind. So I couldn't see any reason whatsoever why that was sitting there. It made no sense. And checking the scale diagrams I have for the ship showed they should actually be back here. The lines should run up. Right? So you've got the shrouds here, which are the lines that run up to the mast in a triangle. Um, for the rat lines, and then here you'd have shrouds that run up, and they would have the flags on if you don't want to communicate to another ship. So remember, they didn't have bloody mobile phones back then, no. So the only way they could communicate ship to ship. So when you correct it, you've got the rat lines running there, and then basically the shrouds here will just be seen after the rat lines. So, um you can put your communication base. And it looks a lot neater too. It looks a lot neater. It's a lot less messy. At the bow, the um, the planking lines here actually didn't match up at all. You can see see this one, sort of there, there's, there's no matching on that side. And this one doesn't match up to anything. And those two, they're, they're all out. I mean, if you count there, there's, there's four. One, two, three, four. Here, there's only three. One, two, three. It doesn't match. So... The port and starboard sides don't match up at all. But luckily, when I checked my plans, I found there was actually supposed to be a beam here. There's a little beam that runs up here, just underneath where the bowsprit is, and that runs up from the keel. So it was very simple and easy to um, build that out of a bit of 2mm scratch plastic, a bit of um, evergreen plastic I've got there, put that in there. Now also at the bow is this huge structure here which is a massive big um, ratcheted winch which will drag your anchors up and down so 
there's actually a line that runs underneath there. Now that goes down and it'll go through the bow here and it comes out a little horse hole there. All right. Now that wasn't on the kit. I've actually um, drilled those in myself and also drilled the holes in. You can't quite see them, but there's there are holes, holes on the other side. So I will be running a, um, a piece of slightly thicker than the rigging rope, um, cotton, and I'll run that through and out the um, at the horse saw and then to my anchor. Now the anchors, well, the Rebel kit actually has these horrible, horrible holes on each side of the hull, which had I have sort of thought about it where before I started painting, I would have filled them and then um, rescribed all of the plank lines. But it's sort of too late now, so I'm kind of stuck with them. They're kind of horrible. Um, so they'll sort of, they want the, the anchors to sort of be sitting like that, which is not really accurate, not really correct. I mean, ideally, they would either be hanging just off here, right? And um, you've got a little beam here. So basically, there will be a line from that which basically allows you to um, hold the hanging place. In fact, they even, in the kit, I'm going to try and show a picture here, have a bit of rigging detail where they want you to rig this, this anchor um, to the um, to, to that. So that's sort of their idea. They've got, um, well, I'm not getting fine. But anyway, I'll show you the pic. But um, basically, they, they, they really ideally should sit like so, or, as I said, they should sit hanging, just hanging off the bow. Um, as far as I understand, depending if you know the ship's just in anchor or or in lay, and then it, or it might be just in harbour, or there's there's a number of positions depending on what the ship's actually doing. But I'd I'd ideally like to um, like to position mine correctly there, which they won't quite sit because no, everything's leaning the wrong way. So um, I don't think I can show you what I'm trying to do here. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. So ideally, I'd like them to sort of sit in that position, which is also um, fairly fairly true, fairly accurate. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I, I suppose I could try and fill it and um, at least make it primary yellow. I, I may have time to do that, but the trouble is I've already stained this side. Um, although that stain is workable, as I'll show you. So there may be a way to get around this. Maybe on this side I'm stuck with it. I'll have to have the anchor um, sitting in its stupid little hole. So yes, on this side I could put it in that little hole and have it sort of sitting there and tie it off, and that's that's a possibility because I mean the um, because I've already stained the wood on this side. If I uh, fill that hole now, so you know, if I fill that hole and try and match up my stain, I could make an almighty mess. Although this stuff is pretty manageable, and I mean you can totally remove it and you can work it in. So there there are there are there's options. But over here, well we might fill that uh, because I'm going to be painting this. Um, later on in this video and um, we'll staining it so I might fill that because it's pretty easy to spot put in the um, Steiner S so we might do that repair now now while I wait for um, I've got some UV reactive uh, filler there to fill that little hole and I'll cover it with some perfect plastic putty uh, while I wait for that to set uh, I'm going to cut the hole on this side now to do that first I need to make sure that I'm basically doing exactly the same thing. So I need to make sure I'm perpendicular to the center line of the hole and make sure I'm mirroring the other side. Allow for width of pencil. And that'll give me a line. And again here, and allowing for the width of the pencil, making sure I'm exactly perpendicular and another line. Now to make sure the cut goes perfectly to where I want it to be because when you hit there with a razor saw it can be really quite um, quite wacky and plastic is quite soft is I will score. Now you do this with woodwork is you to get a perfect edge when you're cutting is you first score. Use a very sharp knife. So it's far easier to make a mark with a knife and know that that's exactly where you want to go Okay, so it says he making a couple of gaffes there, but no, that one's correct. That one isn't. Okay, so I've made my score lines. Now it's just a matter of bringing in the razor saw. It's looking particularly grubby. And I'll probably have my hands in the way. And remember, this is very 
and really feel, feel wobbly. I would advise doing this before you actually start gluing and painting the kit. But of course, do I ever listen to my own advice? No. No, of course not. Just do whatever I really want. I'm a complete bloody idiot. It doesn't matter. I wasn't careful. And the thing is, I can always cut here and repair. I mean, the thing is, it's going to be when you come through at the bottom, so you need to support that piece as much as possible, obviously, otherwise you're going to snap it. Even if you did that, you could probably build the whole thing. But, yeah. I noticed, oh, no, one way, whoop, there we go, we're through. Made a tiny little nick there, but we can sand and putty that out. Alright, that's one. Now, I did that first cut basically on the long side because that's the one that would wobble the most if i if i'd done my first cut over here on the short side that would have been an easy one to do but then i'd be cutting that last bit off and on the long side which meant there would be a lot more wobbling around so when you're doing something like this yeah you do the long side first because you've got still got the support and then once that's through with your short side that one will be easier because being short it should not wobble around as much so again scoring only in one direction at first and trying to hold and cut as much as possible and we're through we didn't make any damage at all so there we go in fact it's it's sitting underneath there so now it'll be a simple matter of getting out the diamond files and giving that all a bit of a sand that should come out of there come out of there little buddy there he is oh he's there there we go and that's already cut now what I will do is I'll um I'll get some one millimeter, I think it's one, it could even be half a millimeter plastic sprue, I'll have a look. Whatever I use, I think it's half a millimeter plastic sprue. And I'll cut a um, beam exactly the width of these posts as I did there. See that little part's got width, but it's not it's very thin as far as the side view goes. So um, I'll make an identical piece for there. And what you do when you're making these pieces is you make them a bit longer than you think you need. You measure it up and you make it a touch longer. Because then as you fit, you'll uh, slowly sand it down, cut it down, and you slowly bring it down and eventually it fits firm and you're in. If you make it trying to get the perfect size, you'll probably make it too small to start with and then boy, you, it's very hard to make something longer. It's always easy to make a part slightly shorter. So okay, I'll get on with that now. I'll make up that part. But um, in the meantime, we have to do the same sort of thing here. We need to cut away this so that I can cut off the little stanchions here and I can put them over here and they can be used to hold my signal lines, the, the shrouds for basically my signal flags. Now I've worked out from my drawings, you did need to leave little stubs. Um, so I've worked out the height of those. So again, I will do the same thing. I will pencil mark and then I will cut through those beams. Now this requires a bit of a steady nerve, of course. You really don't want to slip. So um, having those marks there and knowing exactly where you're going to cut is the thing. And then it's just a matter of very carefully getting in there with the, um, with the little saw blade and working your way through, working from each side and each angle and just slowly cutting it out. Never doing too much, just doing enough so that you can work your way through and then free those parts. All right, those are now cut away, and it looks like a dog's breakfast, I know, but I have cut above my marks. And the reason being that I know that it wouldn't come off clean, especially trying to do this with a model a half built. So I've cut away higher than I need it, in that now I can very carefully get in with the files, and I can file those down, and I can smooth all this out, and I'll get a lovely finish. Again, if you cut too much off, it's very hard to put it back. Well, you can glue bits back on, but you're making more work for yourself. But if you cut it just a little higher than needed, you can file and sand down to what you want. So I'll do that now, and I'll prepare the parts, and then we'll put all the corrections in and finish this bit of railing. The uh, rail there is off now, and that's all been filed down nice and smooth. And after you do all this sort of cutting and everything, it's a good idea to clean up. And it's a bit hard with your models made because you can't exactly put the parts in and wash them, which would be the better way to do this. Do this all back when it was just styrene and the whole halves were separate. And then you can cut all these pieces off and do all your clean up and then wash the sprues. If not, what I do is I use an old toothbrush. I use that for getting in and get all the bits out and give the thing a good clean. 
because um, you can't really get in there and sort of wash at this stage with water because especially if you're using acrylics well you might remove some of your paint and especially as this um i'm going to show you shortly i'm going to put on here the, the life effects uh, life effects life color um liquid pigments um those 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 colors they're um they're water based and they wash off with water until you seal them in with the varnish so yeah so that's a handy tool so this is the uh tiny little piece that I've cut loose from the um, the front railing there and that will go just behind this rail here just as I've done on the other side we'll fit that on a sec now what I have done to make sure that that's going to fit properly oh, I just want to what that is sounds like that's my ghost um, on the um, the back side of this rail here I've scraped the paint off so that it'll fit better and also I've done a lot of cleanup on this little part now there was a lot of flash on these as for all the little rails with the um the pegs and i think they're called sanctions 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 um all of them were covered in flash and i'll probably show a little photo up here of basically how much i had to remove and these ones were particularly bad but they because they were basically molded so close to the hull um they were, they were fairly hard to get to so i took the opportunity to um to clean them up now that they're all cut off now the other little part i've made is this one and this will fit perfectly in here. So I'll um, go and put those parts in now, and that will finish this modification. We can get on with the painting the hull. Another part that I scratched. I'll show you some pics here of how I made an evergreen tube. Is the um, this is the chimney from the galley kitchen? Right? Kitchen's below there, and that's the chimney from the um, the stove. Now the kit has one, but um, it is dreadful. It's ejection marks, whole body lot, you know, and, and it's square and it's boring. Well, it looks a bit bloody strange, and covered in flash and you know all the usual sort of stuff that I had to contend with in this kit. And then uh, my research showed that, um, at least the drawings and a few pictures I looked at, that it should be round, it should be you know, cylindrical. So I did that. And then there was a whole furor on Facebook, you know, and showing me pictures and everything of wooden ship models, kits out there, and they've all got a square. Yeah, well, they could all be making the same mistake. Who knows? And um, even being shown some of the original bounty plants, you know, original, original, original ones, you can't tell. It's a side on pick, and I mean, it doesn't give you any relief. So you don't know if it's round or a square. Now, further to some of my research, the um, chimney is round inside, but sometimes has a square wooden surround. So both options are probably true, and I'm choosing to go with the round one because I've gone all the trouble of making that part, and I rather like it. Now, I'm particularly proud of a couple of parts here that I remade or scratch made the bow. These are the headrails. The um, centre run here, I made that out of sprue. The, um, this had to be totally recut out and refit. There's so much flash and rubbish in here, which is one reason for remaking the centre rail, which should curve up and join up to there. It's just dry fit at the moment. The shape is too much to fall over. This rail here too is, um, is actually flat. That's how, according to the diagrams that I saw, it should actually sit like that. It's actually a piece that's flat and curved. So that is actually how that whole arrangement should look, as opposed to, I'll show photos in the corner here, the kit parts were supplied. Now, it's only a little thing, and I know I'm sort of rivet counting a little bit, but uh, the prow of the ship is fairly important. It's, it's the thing that draws your eye. It's where it's going. So having these rails, these head rails correct, was sort of important to me. And it was a bit of a challenge also that uh, to see if I could actually fabricate these pieces. And they're, they're not entirely 100% accurate, but they're certainly a lot better and aesthetically more pleasing than what the kit provided. So bugger it. I'm happy. Yeah. So now my little um, model ship crew can quite happily crawl up to the front of the ship and take a dump. Because you know what the head is. Yes. It's the ship's toilet. You know, another part that I'm particularly proud of is, is the ship's capstan here. And I know, strictly speaking, it's, um, you know, it really only would be uh, be used if you're raising or lowering the sails, you know. Well, you'd only put the booms in. I mean, the, the kit supplied is this centre part, 
which came up really nicely with the um, Life Color Liquid Pigments wash. I was particularly proud of that. I mean, the trick with that wash, as I'm showing in this video, is you always stroke in the direction you need the grain, and it naturally follows and leaves lumpy lines, and then when that dries, you get a lovely little grain effect. But look, I like the look with the spokes out, so that's the way I went. I was very happy with that. Now, also, while we're here, we'll, um, we'll have a look at the cannons. These are the main ship cannons. My hand has stopped wobbling around enough. The uh, cradles, oh, they had a lot of flash. Um, as can be seen from some of the little pictures I'll try and run on the side here so you can see what's, what happened. And they also had um, uh, little sprue points, which I think were basically so that it would sit correctly on the deck. And then not only that would position the height of the cannon, but um, I removed all those because I didn't want all those in the way. And, and you know, you'll, you'll cement your cannon in the position that you want it. So, um, you know, uh, they turned out quite nice, I thought, considering, I mean, they're tiny. You can see the size of my fingers. And the um, the barrel itself, well, I gave that black steiner res. I drilled out the end, and um, then I've dry brushed it with a bit of gunmetal, and I'm really like the effect. Let's put that together so I can show you how it looks. Once in place, I think they really look the part. And um, I've left the one little retaining tab which goes into this hole of the deck, so at least that locates the, the little carriage there. The um, arms on either side of the barrel so that it can pivot up and down the um the kit actually only had one of them with both arms on the uh, the other three cannons the main cannons all of the arm missing so i had to sort of hunt around for a, a piece luckily the little sprue bits that i cut off the bottom which were either left over from in injection molding or um i think as i think they were actually positioners like the one underneath there was a positioner so that the the cannon barrel would stay level they um, pretended to be just the right width, they were the right diameter. So I cut them to length and I, I popped them in on the other side. And again, show it. Now, what is probably an error in the kit, although it's hard to say, is this circular hole here for the cannon to stick out of. Uh, strictly speaking, they're usually square holes, which allow the, um, the cannon much more um, ability to traverse or tilt. Now, um, are we fighting with aeroplanes? There's a lot of aeroplanes today. It must be bloody Mother's Day or something. There's about an aeroplane every five minutes, so just put up with them in this video. Sorry about that. I know it ruins the ambience. But anyhow, I'm particularly proud of my um, my main cannons there. They should look good. I haven't done the cannonades yet. That go. There's quite a lot of those that go sitting on a little thing. I've got to do a bit of scratch work on those, and I'll discuss those later. There's still some more work to do for those. But the cannons themselves, I'm very happy with how they turned out. And although... I've been, you know, when I drilled out the hole in them, I had a few people say, oh, no, you know, they probably would be, have a little, there's a little cork that goes in there. It has a proper name, I forget. There's a little plug that goes in there that they only really pull out when their cannons have rolled out for active duty. But seeing as this cannon is in the rolled out position, I mean, if you're not in combat or you don't need gangway on the deck, the cannons usually roll back. They're, they're not sticking out like that. At least that's my understanding. I will need to... Um, put some ropes in there because they usually are rope tied so that on recall the bloody whole thing doesn't roll across the other side of the deck and also so they can be lashed too out the way so say if you need gangway down the um, deck itself so we'll do that when I, when I start doing the rigging and the tying we'll do that detail well it seems this video has gone on for quite some time and I've still got so much more to show you but what I'll do is I'll I'll leave it here and we'll come back with with part two very soon because I've shot a whole lot of footage of doing the wood effect and, and maybe a lot of the scratch things so um, we'll revisit that in a few days time so it won't be long because basically it's all ready to go but um, let's get this video out to you now so you can um, at least whet your appetite on what I've been doing with the bounty so that's it for now it's goodbye from Australia and it's Huru from Harry Houdini Thank you.